this lecture, I'll provide a brief overview of the macroeconomic picture, that is the national economy, the international and political economy. The economy is the aggregate of all things that are bought and sold within an organization, within a nation or a state or something like that. As such, they're not stagnant. They expand or they contract. Sometimes people are buying a lot and sometimes they're not feeling so good. Maybe the weather's bad, whatever, and they're not buying things. Therefore, the economy would get smaller. The amount that everyone buys and sells gets smaller. An economic expansion, that is people are buying more and more and more, occurs when an economy is growing and people are spending more money each time period. Their purchases stimulate the production of more goods and services, which in turn stimulates employment. More people are hired. This creates a market pressure to increase wages. You're trying to hire more people. You got to incent them to come on board higher wages, which in turn increases demand and so forth. You get this nice rolling stone, building momentum, uh, positive feedback thing that causes this expansion to occur. The standard of living rises because more people are employed and have money to spend, so they buy more goods and services, which drives additional production. Rapid expansions in the economy, however, if this happens too fast, there may be inflation because everyone's trying to buy things and so prices go up and that causes a, a rise in prices. Inflation can be harmful if individuals' incomes don't increase at the same rate as the prices of goods and services. I have a certain amount of money, I'm getting raises, but the prices are going up faster so I end up buying less of what I can, can have. Economic contraction is when things slow down. We call these recessions. Um, it's a slowdown that's characterized by a decline in the spending. People start to spend less or businesses produce less and they start laying off workers. This is, this is why contractions can lead to this idea of a recession. Technically, a recession is two consecutive quarters of smalling or contracting. Um, size of the purchases in the economy, the gross domestic product, which we'll talk about in a minute. A decline in this production and employment and income and all that are some of the characteristics of a recession. These are characterized by, generally we measure them when we worry about unemployment during a recession. Uh, this is the unemployment is measured as the percent of the population that wants to work but is unable to find a job. So they're out looking for work but they can't get a job. Rising unemployment levels tend to stifle demand for products and goods because effectively people aren't working and so therefore they're, they don't, uh, they can't, they, they put off purchases until they find themselves getting a job. This might cause downward pressure on prices because less people are making demand, so demand goes down. That would tend to mean prices go down. And this condition is called deflation. It's generally considered a risky situation when price declines can be seen at the macro level, that is the aggregate pricing. Um, deflation is considered a risky situ situation since falling prices can eliminate profits therefore slow down business expansion, business investment, more layoffs, more, de more decline. It's the reverse situation that you might have when you have a, a strong expansion. Therefore, deflation is considered a risk to the economy. A very, very severe recession then can turn into a depression in which unemployment is very high, consumer spending is low, stays low and business output is reduced. This can all bring prices down and you have this de deflationary spiral as they call it. Economies expand and contract on a regular basis. It's called the business cycle and this is in response to changes in the in demands of consumers and businesses as well as government spending. The government is a significant part of the economy so when the government is spending money that 
reinforces the kind of flywheel effect and continues the economy in its expansion. Although fluctuations in the economy are inevitable, and to a certain extent one can even predict them, their effects, that is inflation, unemployment, they can disrupt, disrupt the lives of individuals involved. The big picture is kind of predictable and normal, but the effects locally to individuals who lose their jobs or communities that lose a factory can be quite significant. And this is why governments try their best to minimize these kinds of, uh, these kinds of events. Another important consideration is that inflation can also be harmful if they run out of control in the sense of inflation. If individuals' incomes don't increase at the same pace as prices, but prices keep going up, people actually start buying less because prices are higher, but the prices keep going up because of other trends in the economy in terms of the cost of various goods of production. Hyperinflation can be extremely severe. The worst case was in, the 19, in Hungary in 1946, where at one point there were doubling of prices every 15.6 hours. And also, in, we hear about in the Weimar Republic, uh, people taking wheelbarrows of cash to buy their products and the price is going up so quickly. Because prices are going up quickly, people want to buy a lot before the price goes up, which drives the price up further. So you have this additional cycle. Um, another bad case was in Zimbabwe, which had hyperinflation so severe that its inflation percentage rate rose into the hundreds of millions. Whenever they eliminated the Zimbabwean dollar, the put certain price controls, inflation began to decrease, but it can disseminate or actually destroy a country's economy, and that's what happened in Zimbabwe. So we have this system of the overall economic system of a country growing or expanding, sometimes slowing down a little bit or even contracting a little bit, but then returning to expansion. And the government tries to maintain that support because that's really what drives economic activity, allows taxes to be collected, allows government services to be provided, um, you know, mail and transportation and all those sorts of things. People get their jobs. The economy moving forward is a critical element. And, um, and, and it's one of the things that is watched by several different kinds of government agencies. Um, in the next lecture, we'll talk about how one measures all of this so that you get a sense and you can predict what is likely ha what is happening and then what likely will happen in the future.